So Galway, 13 points. Mayo, 14 points in the Munster. In the Munster, in the Connacht Senior Football Championship Final. What a win in the end for Mayo. They are just two wins away from ending a 69-year wait for Sam Maguire. And in the end, in a tense very you know nervous battle there towards the end of the game both teams there's a lot on the line for both teams you know i think both teams know very well that there's a huge opportunity to play in an all-ireland final for the team that comes out of this game and look that's not to discount cork or tip but you know regardless of who wins that game mayo will go into the semi-final as favorites so i think there's a lot of pressure going into this game for both teams and i think that showed in the final 10 to 15 minutes but in the end you know mayo for me well deserved of the victory they were the better team in the first half in the second half you know it was 50 50 at times and it looked like oh we were coming more and more into the game but certainly for that first half performance you know mayo really should have blown galway out of the water you know there was one point in that first half where mayo were six points to two up and they should have won this game very comfortably. You know, they should. They missed a lot of easy chances in that first half, chances that they would have normally scored. And maybe it was just nerves getting to Mayo a little bit in this game. But look, listen, I'm here as always to give my thoughts and my match reaction. And yeah, let's get straight into it. So as always, of course, what we'll do is we'll have a look at the teams here first of all. So uh, the Galway team here first of all. So in goal, per uh, Bernard Power. And then, of course, in the full back line, it was Sean Kelly, uh, Sean Mulcurran and Johnny Heaney. In the half back line, Liam Silk, Johnny Dewan and Killian McDade. In midfield, it was Keen Darcy and Gary O'Donnell. In the uh, half forward line, it was Michael Daly, Paul Conroy and Paul Kelly. And of course, in the full forward line, it was Desi Keneally, Shane Walsh and Ian Burke. Uh, if we move on, of course, to the Mayo side then, so David Clark in goal, Oshin Mullen, Chris Barra and Lee Keegan. The halfback line was Paddy Dirk and Stephen Cohen and Owen McLaughlin. Midfield was Connor Loftus and Matty Rowan. And then in the half forward line, it was Kevin McLaughlin, Ryan O'Donoghue and Jermyn O'Connor. And then the full forward line, of course, Tommy Conroy, Aidan O'Shea and Killian O'Connor. And of course, having a look at some of the scores, of course... Uh, in today's game, so Shane Walsh, interesting enough, hitting seven points in the game, four of them from place balls. Pon Paul Conroy hitting three. Desi Keneally, Paul Kelly, and Gary O'Donnell all chipping away for Galway for Mayo. Killian O'Connor, Tommy Conroy, fantastic as always. Killian O'Connor hitting four. Tommy Conroy with three. And Matthew Rowan, who was my man of the match, with two points. Fantastic in the midfield again. You know, one of the most impressive things about this Mayo team is they don't always get scores from their forwards. But what they do, you know, similar again in the Ross Common game, is they get the likes of Paddy Durkin, they get the likes of Matty Rowan, and even Brian Walsh, who came off the bench at half time to really contribute and, and contribute to this team. And a massive win in the end for Mayo, you know, certainly in the first half. Um, it was a fairly intense start you know Galway obviously got the better in the opening stages you know Desi Keneally with that early point looking very bright indeed and he looked like he was going to be a, a bit of a problem for Mayo it turned out to be his only point in the game um, but he was causing a couple of problems for Mayo you know he kicked that early point and although Mayo were playing with the wind I thought Galway were doing well in the midfield but the only problem for Galway was they kept losing the ball in poor situations you know even the likes of Shane Walsh at times took a while really to settle into the game uh, he gave away the ball once or twice in the first half which, which was a little bit poor uh, Killian O'Connor was causing Liam Silk a lot of problems you know Killian O'Connor had that early goal chance which uh, was saved of course by Bernard Power and it wasn't really well struck by Killian O'Connor but you know he turned Liam Silk brilliantly uh, was one on one with the goalkeeper, and of course, it was saved uh, by Bernard Power. And um, it looked like in the first half that Galway were having a lot of the same kind of problems that they had against Mayo in the league game. The only different difference was that Mayo were not uh, capitalizing on that. Mayo were missing chances; they were hitting shots wide. They weren't really comfortable in taking points in this game and you know a little bit poor from Mayo from some of their forwards at times the likes of Killian O'Connor missing the odd chance even Tommy Conroy the odd time but Mayo were still always in control they were still comfortable in the game and Galway were struggling to really get down the other end and create any chances you know it was again kind of similar problems to what Roscommon had against Mayo where they would win their odd kick out and they would at times be good at you know getting turnovers but it was just transitioning from the midfield to attack that was a little bit disappointing and I thought Matthew Rowan was brilliant at turning the ball over. You know, he'd done a great job at times uh, cutting back into the defence, you know, tracking back, winning the ball back and then really kind of bringing the ball forward and then hitting the ball on to the half forwards. Uh, Paddy Durkin again, 
fantastic you know once again at wing back um getting forward you know mayo probably have the best wing backs in the country at the moment you know Pat Mogan maybe up there you know for Donegal what a, what a performance it was from him yesterday but when you think about it with Dublin obviously no Jack McCaffrey in there this year so Mayo have that option with Paddy Dirk and with Owen McLaughlin and one thing I did like from both of them in this game was they know when to go f- get forward they choose their right moments you know they don't just get forward when the attack isn't on they don't just get forward consistently and leave spaces in behind you know you even seen in the second half they dropped off quite a bit because I think they knew that you know the onslaught was coming from Galway that they were really going to put more and more pressure on this uh, Mayo team and look listen Mayo could have been further in front in that first half there's absolutely uh, no doubt about it in my opinion you know Mayo had nine wides in this game in total and eight of them were from play so a little bit disappointing in that sense from Mayo just missing a couple of chances in the first half when really they could have blown Galway completely out of it but I think at the same time you know Galway were quite poor in front of goal as well and you know you know eight wides in total from that from them six of them from play two of them from freeze even those two those two lay frees from Shane Walsh um a little bit disappointing look listen I know in the conditions it's tough the wind makes it more difficult and the fact that Galway you know this is their first competitive game in the All-Ireland Championship um meant obviously that you know they weren't really probably they didn't have the match sharpness going into this and maybe if Shane Walsh had have had more time on the pitch had been back uh, in the team for a little longer since his injury you know maybe then he could have been able to to take one or two of them points and yeah look listen you know Mayo were we're doing a good job Uh, Ronan Steve came on in the 23rd minute um, you know, I've mentioned it before in my preview that I think he's a fantastic midfielder and he did make a bit of a difference in the first half for Galway where they were able to kind of just slow the momentum of Mayo a little bit down. Um, and although Johnny Dewan went off injured, they were still, you know, tricking away with the odd point here or there, just keeping the scoreline competitive and they didn't allow Mayo completely get out of sight. And look, listen, in the second half, you know, Gary O'Donnell hit a, hit a point at the start of the second half. And you thought that maybe Galway now were going to be able to, to turn this around. Um, but it wasn't the case. You know, Mayo were able to go down the other end. They were able to get their own responses. And Manny Rowan hit a point. Uh, very, very well taken for, for Mayo. And yeah, look, listen, it was it was interesting. And Mayo were just had that early bit of lead in the second half. And Galway did have a big chance, though. You know, Johnny Heaney with a great chance. Um, massive opportunity Clark was probably beaten as well and that was a huge opportunity for Johnny Heaney it was Shane Walsh who played the ball in and it was linked on to Heaney and you know he sent his shot wide and in a game with such fine margins you know just a point in the difference that could have been the difference for Galway if they had have got a goal in this game and yeah, look, listen, Mayo scored three points in the opening four minutes of the first half, which I thought was interesting. And that was in response to that Gary O'Donnell point, And that could have been the difference as well. Um, Mayo probably could have had a goal chance themselves. You know, in the 48 minute, the ref called a, a ch- you know, Mayo had a chance. They were breaking forward and the ball fell to Brian Welsh in front of goal. But the referee actually called it back and he didn't allow the advantage to be played. And I thought the ref was quite poor at times in this game. A couple of times Galway should have had freeze and they weren't given. A couple of times Mayo probably should have even had freeze and they weren't given. And the ref probably didn't allow the advantage to be played at times. Um, even in that final moment of the game, there was one opportunity where Shane Walsh from the sideline knocked the ball forward and the referee called it back. And I just I found that a bit disappointing. Like let's let us let us let the game flow, let's let the game go. And uh, that was quite disappointing. Um obviously there was a bit of controversy in the final minutes, you know, Owen McLaughlin brought down Sean Kelly, who was fantastic for Galway as well in this game. You know, we have to mention him, he was absolutely brilliant for Galway in this match. Um, really good at getting forward and supporting the attack and he made that drive and run that Mayo were struggling with at times they were struggling with his forward runs and Owen McLaughlin brought him down just outside the square and obviously a free black card in the end right decision and look listen you know Joe Brawley I'm sure you know his his words on Sean Kavanagh very famous words of course um, which I'm sure everyone knows what I'm referring to I'm sure it would have been interesting to see what his take on this would have been but look, listen, it is what it is. You know, cynical foul on happens in the game, whether we like it or not. Blackheart is there to try and stop it. The reality is you're not going to be able to stop it. What else can you do? It was outside the box. It's a it's a free for Galway. And yeah, look, listen, 
Some people will say, you know, if you're a Mayo fan, you'll probably say, oh, McLaughlin done the right thing because he broke up the play when she- when Sean Kelly was going through on goal. Maybe if you're a Galway fan or an opposition fan, you'll say, that's really disappointing and we don't want to see that in Gaelic football. Personally, I think it is what it is. Um, if it was if it was the opposite way around and Galway or Mayo were going through on goal, needing a goal in the past few minutes and, you know, one of the uh, Galway players brought down one of the Mayo forwards, let's say Aidan O'Shea, for example, gets brought down, you know, and it's just outside the square. It is what it is, you know, that's just kind of how things go. And in the end, you know, it was a free for Shane Walsh. He took the point. Could he have went for the goal? No, I don't think so, you know, unless we're looking at Michael Meehan's standards. Um... You know, he had to take the point there. There was still a bit of time, and they did even win the resulting kick out. But unfortunately for uh, for Galway, it went out for the sideline. And like I said before, Shane Walsh hit it forward quickly into the half forward line, but the referee called it back and wasn't able to to allow the game to flow. And to be fair to Shane Walsh, you know, from the second attempt, it was really poor. He played it on the ground and nerves. Nerves were a big thing in this game, in my opinion. And there's a lot on the line and. I think Galway have have crumbled a bit this year, unfortunately. Um, You know, one interesting thing that um, Padraig Joyce came out and said before a ball was kicked this season was he said that anything short of an All-Ireland for Galway would be a disappointment. And look, listen, I get where he's coming from. Galway have a very, very talented team. You look at what Corofin have done in the club scene. You look at some of the players on their team. They have a really good team and they showed that in the league before the lockdown. But... You know, that's just a little bit of unnecessary pressure, in my opinion. Um, You know, Mayo are kind of the opposite in many ways. You know, Mayo are playing without pressure, it seems. They came into this Connacht Championship being wrote off in many ways. And in the end, they've gone and won the Connacht Championship. And now they're just one win away from another crack at the Sam Maguire in a 70-minute game. And yeah, look, listen, Mayo for me, you know, it's going to be interesting to see who they play in the semis. I think it will be Cork. And you would probably fancy Mayo. It would probably be the most Mayo thing ever to actually lose that semi-final to Cork. Um, it's going to be a different type of game for Mayo because I think Mayo will go into that game as massive favourites, kind of similarly to what we've seen with Kerry. And, you know, if Cork adopt a similar game plan to what they did against Kerry and be really rigged at the back and make it very difficult for Mayo, you could see Cork ending up snatching a victory. It's definitely not impossible. And I think a lot of people who are saying, oh, Mayo are now in an All-Ireland final, it's just mistaken. It's like people saying Cork are going to be tip before a ball is kicked. And look, I do think Cork will be tip. But saying it's already happened is, a li- you know, you don't want to jump too far ahead. Um... But, you know, looking at it from an outside point of view, you would have to say that Mayo are in a fantastic position from now to reach an All-Ireland final. Um, Yeah, look, listen, my man of the match was Manny Ruan. Fantastic uh, in the midfield, as I said before, like drifting back in defence at times and then real box-to-box style player. Um, Really, really good stuff and, you know, contributed with two points as well. Very impressive from him as well. So, yeah, very good performance for Mayo. They win their first Connacht Championship in five years and they have to beat Roscommon and Galway as well. And they've had to do it the hard way and deservedly so, in my opinion. Look, listen, Galway will come back next year. They will be contenders again next year, I'm sure. And if the Championship is played in summer next year, I'm sure Galway will be a threat without a doubt. So, yeah, look, listen, I'm going to wrap this up here. Do leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. My name is Aaron, and I'll see you in the next video.